One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the What's up guys, it's Ari Haas here. And today I'm just gonna be kind of going over like one of my typical kind of like process kind of thoughts of like stuff that's kind of gone on this week, like kind of some lessons and um, also some trade recaps. So uh, without further ado, let's just get into this one. So um, I think the number one thing that a lot of people kind of have been worrying about or something that I've seen a lot in my DMs is that a lot of people worry about things that they can't control. Um, you know, they, they are, they're always kind of worrying about, okay, um, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to find like a, per, a prediction, an exact method. They're trying to get like almost like an a hundred percent win rate. And a lot of the things that we can't control are very, very easy. And I guess it's just kind of a rem a reminder of something to kind of think about. So things that you can control are definitely your entry, your exit, uh, your risk management, um, following your process daily, waking up early, putting in the work, spending um, uh, the time that you spend in a position, um, the time you spend kind of going over, watching videos, um, your emotions, and your over trading. And a lot of the stuff that you can control, maybe you haven't thought about, like you can always control the amount of work you put in, the amount of back testing you put in, the amount of kind of grind that you do. And, you know, you can also control your time off, how you approach things. So I think that's also really, really important and something to kind of always think about, right? And so stuff that you can't control would be, um, you know, what happens when you're in a trade? So you press that buy button. Whatever happens next, you cannot control. But what you can control in that moment is, let's say maybe you, you buy two bucks and we go to 190 and that $2 line didn't work. Well, you can just stop out at 190 because obviously the market's telling you you're wrong if that's kind of what your plan was, right? And so you can't really control the outcome and the result. And that's where that kind of following process, waking up early, uh, putting in the work, you know, they all come into play. So you focus on what you can control to kind of prepare you for, you know, what you can't. And a lot of the time I kind of think to myself and think, you know, um, there are a lot of kind of uh, 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 NHL players or NFL players, right? They work all week to play that one Saturday or Sunday game or Monday game, right? And the rest of the time they're, they're on the field, they're practicing or the rink, um, they're going over the videos, they're saying, how can I get better? You know, they're, they're, they're improving their shots in practice or, or their throw in practice or their tackle or whatever they're working on, right? It's really a performance-based sport. But when they're in the game, you know, they, they, they can't really control the outcome, right? Um, their, their preparation really kind of controls their outcome. So I kind of um, approach trading the same way where it's like, you know, I'm going to put in the work on the weekend still, right? I mean, in Canada right now, we have all this kind of COVID stuff going on, crazy lockdowns. Um, and that's something I can't control, right? I, I can't, I can't control that. So I'm not going to worry about that, right? I'm just going to deal with that. What I can control is the amount of work I put in. So I'm going to use that kind of lockdown and stuff like that. And it was funny. I, I don't, I'm not sure if Bao kind of mentioned this in chat or in a video, but he said, you know, we love lockdowns because, um, you know, it gives, it gives us a, a chance to really work and, you know, there's no excuses, and, uh, you know, I, I, I know, like, speaking for him, like, he doesn't, like, necessarily, like, love the lockdown. But, you know, you get where, what I mean, where, you know, it gives us a chance to really kind of work hard. And then after this stuff is all over, you know, you can go out, you can get kind of rewarded for all that work you put in, and you come out 10 times better than you did before. So this is just kind of, like, what you should be worrying about. I thought that I would kind of make a slide, like, kind of on that, because there have been a lot of people... Um, you know, I guess kind of DMing me about stuff we can't control, right? Um, and focus on what you can control and what you can't, um, you just can't really worry about. So only focus on kind of this. Um, also the news, right? There are a lot of times where, uh, for instance, 
I don't really see it with longs that often because the news will come out and then the stock will kind of go up and then you kind of adjust from there. But as for kind of the shorts, there's a lot of times where someone might get short pre-market or someone might be short in the middle of a day and an offering comes out, right? And if you're a short seller, that can really benefit you. If you're a long trader, that really probably doesn't benefit you. I mean, this week we did have kind of that DPW pre-market release that random PR when everyone was short and that kind of caught a lot of people off guard as well. But again, that's something that we can't really control, right? And so you, for, for, for kind of this, what you can't control, um, you know, you, you can look in the filings all you want and you can uh, look to see if they, they need cash, if they want to kind of file an offering or something like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, you can't control whether it's going to happen or not. So you just really need to, to kind of focus on what you can control, eliminate what you can't. Um, I really love this quote. Um, it's been thrown a lot around a lot recently, kind of in the trading community, where it's like, luck is, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity, right? And that's something I really love and something that I've kind of been talking about where, you know, if I buy a support line at five bucks and then I go up another $2, um, you know, I'm not really expecting that, but I'm prepared for either scenario, right? I am prepared to take a single. I'm prepared to take a home run. I'm prepared to take a loss, right? Because I've spent so long and so much time kind of just saying to myself, okay, you know, maybe my target's 550. I get in at five bucks and my target's 550. And all of a sudden we just blow right past that, right? You know, again, that's kind of where uh, preparation meets opportunity. I'm prepared to buy that line, right? I'm in a good emotional uh, condition, standpoint, um, i prepared, I've done my due diligence. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley, I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot, it is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Um, I've done everything I needed to do to put me in that situation. And then when those home runs come, um, you just kind of nail them. So I've always been a big proponent of not necessarily swinging for the fences all the time. I love the consistent singles. You know, they're awesome. And sometimes I even need to take myself a step back because, you know, I see Alex or Bao and they're talking about, wow, you know, nice 20 cent scalp, nice 20 cent scalp, right? And when you're a long trader, it's so funny, and, and maybe this is just me, but um, when I think and I go back to kind of my longs, um, you know, everyone's always like, it, you know, it's kind of a rush. Like you make like 50 cents or, or 30 cents. And back when the pandemic was going on, it'd be like 30, 40, 50 cents. And, you know, that kind of became normal. And so it really kind of humbled me to see Alex and Bao and, and, and other traders, Tom and James, you know, they're up 10 20, 30 cents, and they're like, okay, nice trade here. You know, that always reminds me to say, okay, you know, 10, 20, 30 cents, like, that's good. That, that you know, that's profit, right? And so um, that's something that I've really been trying to, you know, not work on because obviously if I'm up, you know, 20 cents and I see a seller step in, I'm, I'm selling. But I'm always trying to say to myself, okay, like, there's no need to swing for the fences. There's no need to kind of look for a home run on every single trade or else you're just going to strike out every time. So I've always been kind of drilling, especially in this kind of seller's market. I'm saying to myself, okay, you know, we are in a bit heavier market right now. Um, this is a time where you need to go for 10, 20 cents, right? Adjust your targets. Um, you know, we're not always going to have those kind of conditions where everything is squeezing the moment you get into the trade, right? And so, I mean, that's something that I myself have definitely kind of been working on all the time. And we're always trying to get better. We're always trying to kind of uh, get in. But I mean, this, this kind of market, I'd say for the past like week and a half, two weeks, has really put myself to the test and my own greed to the test. And, um, you know, thankfully, I haven't, you know, if, you, if you've kind of been watching me for a while, you'd know that there was one time in pre-market around a year ago where I just lost six Gs because I just couldn't accept that loss. But thankfully, you know, now I've just find as I've kind of matured as a trader, I've been able to kind of grow and 
and say to myself, okay, um, what am I kind of looking for? And also, um, you know, I don't, I don't really need to go for those home run trades or, or swing for the fences. I'll just wait for when they come. And um, the rest are always going to be singles. And that's been my mindset, you know, for the past, I'd say like two, three months. But I mean, it really gets put to the test because like, I mean, like, for the past, like two months ago, it was like, oh, you buy something pre-market, you're up a dollar or two. Now pre-market's been kind of choppy after the open has been kind of choppy the last two weeks. So you really have to be okay with those singles or else you're really just going to strike out, right? Um, these are some kind of quotes. I've kind of been doing this recently because I find in chat, um, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm not trading or maybe I just have kind of a big trade, I always kind of get these like little, like, I don't, I don't know what they are, but they're like kind of like lesson moments almost where like I think of something and, you know, or I answer a DM and I just, I really want to share it because I find myself like typing it out and sharing it out. I also learn a lot from it and it doesn't go to waste. And like, just like me kind of talking and doing this video, you know, when I do these kind of videos, it's like I'm talking out loud, right? I'm reaffirming my own my own process. And um, I kind of said, you know, it's so crazy that the simplest strategies can make you the most money. Things like following the trend, taking a trade after a momentum shift, and resistance and support lines. But the one thing is that we're all human and we love complicated things because it makes us feel smarter. We never stop searching for the holy grail because that's what we're programmed to think. The more steps the strategy has, the more error you need to expect. That is why Bao keeps it so simple. I mean, and Alex, Tosh, all the mods. For me, when I started making more money, it was when I simplified more and more. I cut out what wasn't working, what was overcomplicated. I stuck to the most obvious lines. Um, I eliminated trying to be fancy and, and spent more time trying to be patient. Simple things like that increase my P&L, my win rate. Um, you know, everything kind of went up dramatically. And you don't need a fancy tape trade or a spreadsheet to make money in the game. What you need is a simple strategy that you can teach your grandmother. Because if you don't have that, you you don't have anything, right? And I think that's 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 really important because when you kind of get into the game, I guess, um, you're going to have a lot of things thrown at you. I mean, whether you've been trading for a year or two, um, you're going to have a lot of different concepts and things thrown at you, right? And I find the funniest thing in this game is that you have like certain little herds of people, right? So thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, for sure, uh, shoot me a DM in chat or uh, something like that. And uh, I'll see you. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.